In this 50 facts video, I'm going to tell you only the pertinent points, only the facts that you need to know to understand the use of oral minoxidil for your hair loss. Separate the grain from the chaff. And in the end, I will cover my protocol for use of oral minoxidil for hair loss. So hang on. <laughs> minoxidil is a potent antihypertensive medication developed in 1964. It relaxes blood vessels so that blood can flow easily. It was first used to treat high blood pressure. For hypertension, as we all know, increases the chances of strokes, of a sudden heart attack, and can cause kidney problems. Though one of the most obscure treatments for hair loss, and heretofore controversial as well for hair loss, there exists at the present moment considerable interest in the use of oral minoxidil for treating hair loss. In this video, I'll touch upon the important points, the important facts that you need to know about the use of minoxidil, oral minoxidil in treating hair loss. Facts that matter. If you need more details about oral minoxidil, I have done a video about two to three years back and the link is in the description box below. So going on to the 50 facts, number one, minoxidil is an over-the-counter medication, OTC medication when prescribed orally. As compared to the topical version, oral minoxidil stimulates hair everywhere in the body. And this may be quite disquieting when oral minoxidil is used for treating hair loss in women. Not everyone who can apply topical minoxidil can take it in the oral form due to reasons which I'll be covering later in the talk. Minoxidil is a stimulator. It increases the anagen phase of the hair cycle and by so doing increases the length as well as the thickness of the hair. Since it is not a DHT blocker, it does not in any way affect the progression of baldness. Progression of baldness goes on unhindered when you're using oral minoxidil for hair loss. This is unlike oral finasteride, which is a DHT blocker. Now this distinction between oral minoxidil and oral finasteride is very important to know. Yes, oral minoxidil works better than topical solution, but in doses more than one milligram a day. Otherwise, it is only as effective as 5% minoxidil. Like any other hair loss medication, any growth that you get by using oral minoxidil has to be maintained by its continued use. You have to use minoxidil in the long term. There is no getting away from the fact that in hair loss, you can abstain from the drug after hair has grown fully. People who use both oral minoxidil and oral finasteride, yes, they can grow a lion's mane. So you might think who would like to get oral minoxidil when topical minoxidil works as well in those taking less than one milligram. Well, there is a set of patients in whom oral minoxidil is advised. Number one, patients who have been taking minoxidil, topical minoxidil for six to eight months, but there was no considerable benefit. In some patients, topical minoxidil causes poor hair texture. It can make the hair look coarse, tangled, dry, and prone to breakage. Makes hair brittle. Those who have sensitive skin and are prone to Skin conditions like eczematous dermatitis and psoriasis should abstain from topical form of minoxidil. Since minoxidil in the topical form can cause skin rash, skin irritation and allergy. And also those who hate the greasiness, the greasiness of topical finasteride, which makes their thinning hair look even worse during the daytime, are advised to go on to oral minoxidil. And lastly, poor compliance to topical uh, formulation of minoxidil due to any reason. The cardiovascular health the cardiovascular status of the patient needs to be properly evaluated before starting oral minoxidil. So when advising oral minoxidil, the patient has to be counseled about the pros and cons of the use of oral minoxidil. The pros and cons have to be weighed very diligently of whether the topical solution will be helpful or the patient can take the risk and go on to oral minoxidil. Oral minoxidil can cause fluid retention and can cause swelling of the ankles, swelling of the feet. But then we have a drug called spironolactone, which is a potassium channel sparing antihypertensive agent. This when used concomitantly along with oral minoxidil will definitely reduce the side effect. So it can be sparingly used in those people in whom there is a side effect of swelling of ankles and who have a normal cardiovascular status. When used together, oral minoxidil and oral finasteride help grow and maintain hair, but in different ways. Finasteride blocks DHT while minoxidil opens blood vessels and opens potassium channels. Both finasteride and minoxidil in the oral form complement one another. If oral finasteride is the anchor, minoxidil is the boost. 
Yes, there will be a shedding phase when you switch, but it is not very severe. Shedding starts usually two to eight weeks after initiating this drug and stops soon thereafter. Oral minoxidil is also used in four types of non-responders to topical minoxidil. And these are, minoxidil exerts its effect when it is converted through the enzyme sulfotransferase to its active ingredient form, minoxidil sulfate. Those who lack sulfotransferase are non-responders. Also thick dermis, that is a thick skin, does not respond well to topical form of minoxidil. Thirdly, if you have a large area, a large area of thinning, topical minoxidil may not be sufficient to cause hair growth in this vast area. Topical minoxidil can cause excessive scaling, excessive dandruff in those patients who are prone to it. In others, it can cause increased sensitivity of the skin. There are six indications to my mind in which we can exhibit this drug to females suffering from hair loss. Number one, female pattern alopecia, chronic telogen effluvium, isolated cases of post-chemotherapy alopecia, monilithrics or beading of hair, intraction alopecia, and lastly in the loose anagen syndrome. Since minoxidil lowers the blood pressure, it can cause fainting, it can cause giddiness, and this side effect at a place of work can be devastating. And this is most commonly seen in women who chronically have low blood pressure. If we exhibit oral minoxidil in these patients, blood pressure is decreased further. Also in patients who are uh, prone to having BP fluctuations in the erect posture, this medication should be curtailed. Best way to take the medication in such patients is to take this medication at night before going to sleep. Some people develop dark circles like raccoon eyes and others develop eye bags while using minoxidil. And there is a myth going around that minoxidil causes facial aging. It has been noted that it causes skin laxity over the scalp and the face. Minoxidil does affect collagen's deposition. However, there is no evidence in medical literature to, to support this myth that minoxidil causes facial aging. Hypertrichosis following the use of minoxidil may be persistent after stopping its use. But then laser is helpful in the treatment of hypertrichosis, especially that on the face. Laser delivers energy that heats up the stem cells, the stem cells around hair follicles, causing arrest of hair growth in these areas. No, oral minoxidil is not yet FDA approved for the treatment of hair loss. Sadly, there is no standardized dose in the use of oral minoxidil for treating hair loss. Dosage has been worked out by trial and error. One has to try out the dose that is free of side effects and beneficial at the same time. And this may vary from 0.25 milligram to 5 milligrams dosage a day. In my practice, the recommended dose is 2.5 milligram or 5 milligram a day. And this is mostly considered safe in my practice. But then I follow up all my patients very closely, patients who are on oral minoxidil. But some consider this as high dosage. They consider only 1.25 to 1.5 milligram dosage a day as safe. But then the effect also is much lesser. Women, on the other hand, benefit by a much lesser dose of oral minoxidil. Even 0.25 milligrams a day is quite beneficial in some women. Oral minoxidil comes in three sizes of tablets, 2.5, 5 and 10 milligrams. And it comes under various drug labels. The 2.5 milligram and the 10 milligram tablets need to be cut by a pill splitter if lesser doses of minoxidil are recommended. Oral minoxidil can cause changes in color, length or thickness of body and facial hair. It can cause nausea, vomiting, rash. It can also cause breast pain and tenderness. The serious side effects can be listed as new or worsening chest pain, fast pounding heartbeats, swelling in the legs, ankles or feet, rapid weight gain, especially uh, on the face and the midsection, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, pain when you breathe, wheezing, gasping for breath, cough with a foamy mucus, swelling in your face or tongue, and skin pain followed by red or purple skin rash that spreads and causes blistering or peeling of skin. When we speak of side effects of oral minoxidil, these are very well documented. Unlike the anecdotal side effects of oral finasteride, these side effects mostly pertain to cardiovascular health. And mind you, cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer in the world today. So the side effects of minoxidil, unlike those of finasteride, are not to be taken lightly. No, pregnant women cannot take oral minoxidil. Even those who are breastfeeding cannot take oral minoxidil. If kidney function is deranged, oral minoxidil should not be prescribed. Oral minoxidil is usually prescribed for patients who for some reason cannot apply topical minoxidil or are for some reason refractory to the effects of topical minoxidil. Also, there is no additional benefit by combining topical and oral forms of minoxidil together. 
Yes, we can take oral minoxidil and oral finasteride together. And this is a routine in my practice today. But we need to note that oral minoxidil is not a replacement, an alternative to oral finasteride because it does not prevent the progression of bolus. Yes, minoxidil inhibits the deposition of collagen. And this we are going to discuss in the next video, the effects of minoxidil on collagen. Yes, oral minoxidil most certainly benefits those suffering from hair loss due to hypothyroidism. But in these cases, it is essential to correct the thyroid hormone levels. When on these drugs, especially minoxidil and finasteride, drugs which are metabolized in the liver, one should be a social drinker, a social drinker who consumes alcohol only occasionally. And especially in minoxidil, if you drink heavily, mind you, alcohol also causes a drop in blood pressure. And it can make matters worse when you are an old minoxidil. Yes, you can, but you need to get this uh, cleared from your physician, your physician who is treating you for hypertension, so that he can modulate the other drugs for hypertension that he is giving to you. Though oral minoxidil causes equally good results, it does not do so in the long term. As I said, for treating hair loss, finasteride is the anchor, minoxidil is only the boost. My front-loading protocol for the use of oral minoxidil in treating hair loss is used to expedite the growth of hair especially in those who are young and have aggravated hair fall, like in telogen effluvium. Front-loading protocol is used only in selected patients. In these patients, who otherwise would be benefited by topical minoxidil, I use a front-loading dose of 2.5 to 5 mg a day for about 3 months, wait for the hair loss to subside and then put the patient on topical 5% minoxidil with or without oral finasteride. It takes about 6 to 12 months to see the full benefit of oral minoxidil. One study stated that 1 mg oral minoxidil gives similar results as are obtained by the use of 5% minoxidil when 1 ml is applied. And since in women we neither give 5% minoxidil, nor we give them 1 mg oral minoxidil, oral minoxidil and topical formulation of minoxidil may work similarly. However, since higher doses are given in men, men suffering from hair loss, in men, surely, therefore, oral form of minoxidil is more efficacious. Oral minoxidil is an effective treatment for hair loss, but the margin of error is low. If continued under medical supervision, I grade it as the second most potent hair loss treatment today. In men, I give 2.5 to 5 mg minoxidil, oral minoxidil routinely once a day. One very confounding side effect of oral minoxidil is that it causes darkening of hair. A blonde person on oral minoxidil might notice that his hair has turned a shade of brown or auburn. Maximum plasma concentration of oral minoxidil is reached in the first one hour and it declines rapidly thereafter. The plasma half-life is 4.2 hours. No, minoxidil causes hair growth everywhere. It is a myth that it is effective only in the crown. This is because these people lack the enzyme sulfotransferase. Sulfotransferase is lacking in their hair follicles. However, this enzyme will activate minoxidil when taken in the oral form because it is present in the liver. In both males and females who are assessed to be cardiovascularly stable and otherwise fit for taking oral minoxidil, I initiate the dose of 0.625 mg a day. In those patients who are considered cardiovascularly fit, fit for taking oral minoxidil, I initiate in women the dosage 0.625 mg a day and in men 1.25 mg. I then slowly build up this dosage over 3 to 8 months, depending upon how much hair is being grown by this medication. Doses of oral minoxidil for hair loss are considered low doses because we use a maximum dose of 5 mg a day. In hypertension, it has a safety profile of even 10 to 40 mg a day. However, since cosmetic use of oral minoxidil is a zero error requirement, it is very diligently and sparingly dispensed for treating hair loss. The contraindications of minoxidil are listed here. Pheochromocytoma, pulmonary hypertension with mitral stenosis, severe hepatic impairment, angina or recent myocardial infarction, left ventricular hypertrophy and heart failure. Minoxidil should not be given to hair loss sufferers who are less than 18 years of age. In my practice, once the baldness gene switches off, in other words, when hair loss stabilizes, I stop oral finasteride and initiate the patient on oral minoxidil. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions from me, any doubts that come to your mind regarding oral minoxidil, treatment of hair loss, or anything regarding hair in general, 
drop a question in the comment section below and do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and may God bless you.